What's cracking, y'all? Let me be the first to officially welcome y'all, my fuckers, to my brand new joint, Skrilla Villa. Okay, we just started recording. All right, fuckers, welcome to the Trailer Park Boys Fan Federation. I'm Morgan Rector. Hey, fuckers, you know who this is. I'm the one you think about when you're touching yourself. I'm Ray Hazen Jr. And now we've got a routine where we're going to start every episode by sparking up one of these, or maybe in Raven's case, a bong, whatever form it takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it'll be a dab, and we don't know, but... So here here we go. All right, Morgan, fire it up. You know me, I'm just here kicking in with the rock pile. It's J Rock. You got T and that hydro in the back. That's right, yeah. (laughs) I got the pink cush here. This is pretty soon shit, so. Well, see, see, sometimes I wondered if the rock pile were kind of using him in a way. Like, uh, he was uh, doing the thing where he was, like, planning on going to jail for real to promote his album. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. DBS and T were like, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> Fuck that. <Yeah. laughs> that's a uh, uh, matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that's on my list. Uh, I'll be talking about that at some point because... That was at season. That's in season four. That was during Rub and Tug. Tis yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Uh, where's my notes? Here's my notes. Here's my notes. I wanted um, a little, not Corey and yeah. Trev. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my J Rock moments. Yeah, I'm I, mean, I got a bunch here. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna read it all over right now. But yeah, uh, that, that that's just funny when he's when he's faking in the, and they're trying to um promote the album so he's trying to get the album cover when the cops show up but let's not i don't want to get into it too much because it is on my list i know it is and we'll talk about it in a minute yeah there it is right there boom oh matter of fact it's my number five moment <laughs> so oh yeah, it'll, yeah it'll be the one i kick off with so perfect well i saw a guy here in toronto that looked like identical to dvs but i didn't approach him about it because i didn't want him to think like it's a racist thing like we think you know black people all look alike and so i didn't do it <laughs> But uh, he looked like a fucking, like his fucking twin, dude. You know what I love, man? Uh, with the DVS, was, they're like, oh, you're from Detroit. He's like, no, man, I'm from Moncton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Moncton. Uh, it's quite different. Just give me a Me, second. on the other hand. Sorry, I got to Cali, baby. Straight. Cali. Cali. <laughs> from, like, not LA. Not everyone from California is from LA, just so everybody knows that we're not all surfers, as you can tell. I'm very much not a surfer. I don't even skateboard. I might break a skateboard if I step on one. <laughs> I'm about to have another cone here. Cone? That's what they call these down under in Australia, cones. So that's what I like to call them. It's pretty cool, pretty fun little, little thing to say because most people don't know what you're saying and but those who know know you're talking about, hey, bro, you want to have a cone? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what's up. Let's go have a cone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Starburst, man. Anyway, where'd, where'd Morgan go? 
<laughs> well, I think somebody pulled us out front. I got more munchies too, just in case. So if anyone out there gets hungry, let me know. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Look at these. Bam! Oh, you can't see it. I must have left it outside. All right, hold on. Uh, so uh, uh, let's start with uh, best of uh, J Rock. Best of J Rock. J Rock, baby. You're <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, say, 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 it ain't right, it ain't tight. Oh, is that it? Oh, there it is right there, this whole time. <laughs> there it was this whole time. All right. All right, bud. If, if you want to off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll do the number five. Um. It's the entire episode, Who's the Microphone Assassin? I mean, that's just classic J-Rock right there. Oh, that is great. That is great. Uh, really funny. Yeah, no. Go ahead. You, really get the, you really get to the kernel of the situation and uh, see what he's really like when he drops that facade. And he's like, Mom, I can't. sorry to have to say it, but I'm white. Yeah. <laughs> and his mother completely... Mother explained to him about how she used to really love black cock. <laughs> and he's like, really sure? But really? Wow, that's great. Oh, that got him so excited. <laughs> no. But I'm glad to hear you say, keep the out, because that whole episode, you know, that whole episode would have made up, like, half my list, if not more, you know, if you broke up parts of that episode. So... <laughs> that is on my list also but not at number five so i don't you know uh but yeah you're right i mean I, we can just go ahead and talk about it now i mean i mean the episode is hilarious in, in general i mean bubbles has the the one of the best freestyle raps ever you know uh yeah, with no it roll yeah. it roll with my kitties and i'm hard as fuck i mean we all know that one that's just great and um uh, Corey and Trevor get up there and rap. <laughs> my, thought, my favorite hey. lyric from that, I, if you don't like me, just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, Corey ain't asking much, dude. He's asking, you just pretend that you like him. You don't even really have to. Just fucking, you know, just pretend. <laughs> they, they let Ricky treat them like shit. Right? Fucking guy get kicks their asses and doesn't pay him and just fucking verbally abuses them and they, and they accept it. Well, I mean, it's like the uh, negative attention is better than no attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and, and they, I know Trevor had got it on with some guys. I don't know about, uh, I mean, Corey didn't seem to be into that. But I wonder if maybe Trevor had, had as like a crush on Richie, Ricky, you know, like an emotional crush or a sexual crush. Well, maybe lightweight, but if you remember, they both did something with with them, tra you know, them trannies from that episode. Yeah. Guys, guys, let me talk to you for a minute. Longer. Just curious, uh, where'd you hand out those flowers I gave you about the bar? It's this new bar, it just opened up. Yeah, dude, it was dope. We were dancing and shit. We had a great time, man. What was the name of it? Oh, uh, it was like. Empty closet. Yeah, Empty it. closet. You guys don't have a clue, do you? What? Well, that makes sense. So, who are the ladies? Oh, this is Chantel. Chantel. How you doing? My friend Julian. Chanty. Nice to meet you. These guys are great guys, by the way. Thanks, Julian. Have a good night. Oh, Thanks, hey, Julian. Julian. All right. Thanks, you too. Yeah, Julian and I go way back and shit. He's really cute. Um, we, yeah, he's we, cool. We stole all the stuff yeah, to open up this bar. Is it nice? Yeah, really? he's cool. Kind of, I'm like kind of, I get he's him like through travel and stuff. Yeah, all the time. Time. I'm like his big brother, except I'm younger. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. They, they went home with them dude, those girls, right? Those lady dudes. Did you guys get any Jimmy hats? No. Man, that's all right, though. Thanks, man, for the hookup tonight. That's dope. The only two ladies in the place, man. Hey. Hey, 
they they went home with them. Remember, they're both like sitting on the couch, like, well, I, I didn't, and, and you hear Trevor go, I didn't do nothing. Did you, and, did you do something? Like, <laughs> yep. I didn't. Did you do anything? I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. Did you do anything? No, unless you did. I didn't. No, I, I didn't. If you did, I don't know. I mean, but even if he did do something, I don't. I don't. I think technically, like if, if the girl did something to you and you didn't do it back, like that's you didn't really do anything. Yeah, I didn't do anything unless you did something. That's what he said. I didn't do anything unless you did something. <laughs> and I think it was in season five where. Um, Julian said something about like male exotic dancers and Trevor. Oh no, that's every Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's either he's he's bisexual, I guess. I mean, yeah, he's definitely been to the club a few times, uh, uh, enough where he knows when the dude night is. Yeah, exactly. either either that or he goes the lady night so much he knows which nights not to go. I think most straight guys probably have a mental block that actually shoves that information out of their minds. <laughs> like, I am so uh, not interested, I'm not even going to remember anything about it. <laughs> uh, well, shit, I'll go ahead and, and bust out mine since we were already kind of talking about it anyway. So my number five moment is from season four. It's the end. It's in Rub and Tug. It's when the cops roll up. And uh, J Rock's got to get arrested, so he acts all hard. He's got that, pulls that gun out, you know, and he's got that gun out. And that cop's like, What are you, what are you doing? What's going on here? And he goes, I'll tell you what's going on, bitch. Come on, man. Yo, it's man. Time, man. There's all kinds of gunfire and yo, shit going up, on, man. I'm calling the fucking cops right now. This is Ty. This is every fucking chance oh, yes. right now. Oh, yes. And yo, make sure you got the camera. Ready. Make sure you get the shot. This is the album cover. I'm covering my phone. Jay, come on, man. Seriously, yo. Get in the character, motherfucker. We worked all this hard for this shit. Yo, the cops are here. I got this shit. Smoke the crack, put it I don't give a fuck what you do. The album. Sick of the album cover. All right. Let's go. Come on, but tell me what the hell's going on here. I'll tell you what's going on, bitch. You bitch, know what you call me bitch. My face, so I shot the place up. I know you didn't call me bitch. And right, those dude. are my bitches over there. And I'm on crack. You know what I'm saying? Crack. See that pipe? That's real shit. You know what I'm saying? Keep shooting, T. I got to see my baby. fucking T coming out. You Pumping know what I'm saying? Pumping hat. Detroit Bell is smooth. I'm saying Sunny Bell, hard as fuck. Hold it down, Jay Reason. Oh, fuck your Sunny Bell. What the fuck was that? What are you doing, J Rock? What's that real crack? He was smoking. Not real crack. Here, man. You want some chips? And she's like, yeah. what? <laughs> and fucking just goes off and they... Uh, just you mean in a sexual way. <laughs> right? And um, if you remember, that leads into... Uh, which is a really funny moment and it's one of my honorable mentions, but I'll just go ahead and mention it. Um, is, you know, it and it's funny. And, it's not, and the reason why it's not one of his moments is because it takes pretty much the entire uh, fifth season is when he's living under his mom's trailer. Because because he, yeah. he didn't get like in trouble, they just let him out on house arrest and shit. Yeah, that was and really so he's trying to He's trying to hide to act all hard and so act like he's in jail till the album drops. And so he's living under his mom's trailer with the curly wig and the glasses. Man. There's a oh, really great out- there's a really great outtake from that where um he's just he's just like shooting the breeze with uh, T and DVS and. <sighs> Some for some reason they were talking about like sandwiches and the debate between white bread and brown bread and he's saying like I eating that fucking white bread it's unhealthy you know what I'm saying and he, that, the way he said it was funny I mean <laughs> I'm not sure if I remember that part but everything J Rock said he had a way of saying that was hilarious yeah he was a yeah. good actor it's like oh Jonathan Torrens is hilarious I mean. I, I know I've mentioned to you, I think you said you're not a big fan, but you know about Letterkenny, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that show. I'm a huge fan of it. I can't wait to see it. I actually got tickets for their show if they ever... Oh, yeah. If COVID ever freaking says it's okay to have concert or shows again, I, they're supposed to play in San Francisco. I bought tickets freaking a foot now a year and a half ago. <laughs> anyway, um, J-Rock's in that. Jonathan Torrance is in that, too. Oh and, yeah, that's cool. Uh, he, yeah, he plays uh, this Amish guy, uh, last name. Uh, oh yeah, Rich. you're right. Yeah, he's he's pretty funny in that. But I mean, you know, he's a talent. Yeah, Jonathan Torrens, this guy right here, Day Rock, he is a talented fucking dude. I mean, he can just. True. Yeah. You know, like I was watching clips in the episode where he's talking about, which I mean, I'll get to part of it at one point, but not this part, where. 
he's worried about getting kicked out of the park from Barb and, and Randy's going around collecting lot fees and shit. And he and he's and he's stressing out and he looks at Julian and he's like, And you owe me fifty bucks. And Julian's like, For what? And then the and he pulls the sh- off the back of the uh, um uh, which car is it? It's the one they jacked from uh, the Flappy Bird Brothers. Um, Caddy. Oh God! What the heck car was that? Was it an, an Impala? It was black and had yeah. like red stripes around it. Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. And uh, anyway, freaking, uh, they're looking at it. He's like, J Rock, what is this? He goes, It's your spoiler, dude. And he's like, Dude, it's. A pair of hockey sticks and a piece of wood, and J- and dude, and the way J Rock does it, and it's like I know I'll butcher it, under, but he's like, and it's touch, 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 bang, bam, made a spoiler for you, Doug. J Rock, it's made out of hockey sticks and a piece of wood. Yeah, but it's tight, tight, tight. And just the way he like busts out that, I was just like, dude, that's just, you know, like he just like nails that shit. Like I know it probably took some takes and some practices. I'm not stupid. Like yeah, we don't nail everything in one shot, you know. Uh, that's what she said. Show. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, Alright, my next yeah. is... Uh, yeah, he's good. Go uh, it was in uh, Don't Legalize It. And we find out that J-Rock and Sarah are dating. And for one thing, I, was, I felt happy for him because I think she's hot. And uh, though I also suspect that maybe she was really just using him for lodgings because she, she went through a lot of periods in her life like Ricky, actually, where she was homeless and didn't have anyone to live with. Like, Ray took her in once. So she kind of falls in and out of homelessness, and she's sometimes uh, Lucy's roommate, but... Hasn't she... T- I think she's lived with somebody the whole time. Yeah. She lived but, with Lucy, she lived with Jacob and Phil and the thing. She was I, staying yeah, think, at Randy's. I think she was mostly a freeloader, like, with as far as Lucy Yeah, goes. No, I never even thought of that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah she's... Like, maybe Lucy allowed her to live there and, and, you know, told her she had to pay rent. But she's not, her name's not on the, the lease or the deed or whatever. No. So, so I think, yeah, all, all the time, at least through the series, Sarah, the character Sarah always lives in somebody else's trailer. She lived with Lucy and Ricky for a while. And, um, yeah, so she she's kind of, um, yeah, she's a, she's a, what do you call it? Um, a a little bit. Like a freeloader. <laughs> well, she does chip in, and you know, eventually. But um, it's all right. Yeah, she does couch surf quite a bit. It's all right. Some I, cases, I used to couch surf a lot, so I mean, I get it. Well, oh, yeah, I'm not judging, you know. And she also, well, couch surfing and bed hopping. So maybe she was fucking J Rock so that she'd have that place to live, you know? Because it was winter, and she needed to be somewhere warm. Now, obviously, it's better than going to a homeless shelter and. I mean, maybe she was attracted to him, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, I was just, I was uh, really happy to see that happen to J-Rock, and you know something, we, Lu, it's very obvious that Lucy's a slut and Barbara's a slut, but uh, I think Sarah is a, a slut on the same level, she's just a lot better at being discreet about it, keeping it, make, not making it obvious. You know, you know I, I think Sarah... I don't know if I'd say she's a slut per se. She's kind of like I am, like, or was. You know, like I said, I live up here in the mountains now, so I'm not very promiscuous now. But like when I'm sing- when I'm in a relationship, I've always been faithful in that relationship. I've never cheated on anyone, and that's just a fact. You can ask around. Even my ex who hates me can admit that. Uh, but when I'm single, I have no problem with you know, you know, doing whatever. You know, I'm single. Uh, so it's that type of thing. Like I, I've never seen her playing anyone. Like like Lucy be playing Ricky and banging George or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Randy yeah. and Ricky. You know what I'm saying? So so Sarah, yeah, she's been through half the park. But when she's with that one, she's de- it seems like she's devoted to him. And so that I can respect. I don't really care how many you've been with. It's can you be with just me? You know and what I'm saying it- now. Maybe what's and I was thinking a lot about how she got involved with what at least conventional society would deem losers like Ricky, Corey, and Trevor and Jacob. And now, but now I'm realizing. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm me too. If if we live in that world, but um, we do, but yeah, look, that's your trailer right over there, isn't it? Think about what her cool. The coolest thing about her is that she knows she knows what that hardship is like of being homeless. 
and she doesn't judge people for it because she knows that sometimes people just experience a horrific bout with bad luck and that results in that. And maybe she, because she doesn't judge anybody for that, that's what makes her a cool girlfriend because she, she doesn't care about how much money you have. So. Right. That's right. And yeah, so, uh, so that was season eight. So she was, she was dating J-Rock in eight and that's when Bubbles was living under their, their porch, huh? That's right. Yeah. And he had to throw bubbles oh, no. out. He was living on the porch in uh, legalize it. Don't legalize it. Oh, was he? Yeah, because yeah. Okay. So that's the scene we, where we find out that Sarah and J Rock have been dating. Oh, that's right. And when he tells them he's got to go, then that's when Nick, or Julian winds up trying to say he's going to hook him up with the um, the van if if he goes with them on the trip. That's right. That's right. That's right. Was he right. broken up with Sarah by the time eight rolled around? Or are they still together? Um, I'm trying to think. No, they weren't. Eight. Yeah, I don't think they were there. I don't think they were ever together during the series. No, they weren't. Just, 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 just during that movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just a short time thing then. Just like how Sarah was bisexual in the first movie, but heterosexual for the series. I don't know. Maybe she and Lisa, Lucy got it on. Who knows? All right. So my number four one, uh, it goes back to when um, when J-Rock's tripping about getting evicted from the park and Randy's going around collecting fought, lot fees and he's acting all hard and and they're about to fight and he's like, and J-Rock's like, and, you know, I know you're not stepping on me, Randy, because I'm about to pop, you know? And he's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I know you ain't really acting hard with me, right? Because you don't want me to step to you, you know what I'm saying? And take you down, dog, because I'm about to pop. You can tell he's, 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 he's trying to act hard, but like his voice he's is cracking. Can't. Cause he, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, Randy starts like, all right, that scene starts taking his pants off, and fucking J Rock and T are like pulling up one on each side, like trying to, no, come on, Randy, pull your pants up. No one wants to see it. the two pregnant ladies yeah, are there. Yeah, yeah. There's two, two pregnant. Randy, don't take your pants off, dog. Pull that shit up. Nobody, ladies, turn around. Nobody wants to see that shit, dog. Take your, take, put put your pants, pants, pants off, dog. We want to talk about this shit, dog. Randy, pull your pants off, dog. And he's like, girls, turn around. No one wants to see this, Randy. Turn uh -huh. around. Turn around. You know? And then just the part where, like, he pushes him back. And he's like, Randy, I think you'd understand about this right now. I mean, look down, dog. Seems to me that you should be able to understand and be sympathetic to what it's like to be pregnant, dog. What are you talking about, J-Rock? Oh, what? You ain't pregnant with a bucket of chicken? Then this he looks down, and there's Randy's gun right between the two pregnant girls, and it's basically the same. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, that shit kills me, dude. And uh, it gets all down there, and he's like, I hear cola fizzing and mustard and Quag relish coagulating together, but you know what I don't hear? I don't hear a hot motherfucker. <laughs> I hear chicken. I hear cola fizz and mustard and relish coagulating together. French fries and onion rings, Randy, but you know what? I don't hear a heart, motherfucker. Oh, that shit is good, dude. But my yeah, next, but, my next but, great uh, J Rock moment was um, it's also in Don't Legalize It. It's the end where he's we find out he's become successful as a rapper, putting out records and performing big shows. He's famous, and I've, I was happy for him. I thought this Jasmine. Was, yeah, he worked on that for like what twenty years of his life or something. And so I dropped the mic. Yeah. Not a funny moment, but, you know, kind of a moving moment. No, that was cool. That was cool. Uh, what's your name again? Aaliyah Jasmine. Yeah. It's just about some, something is as long as them two getaway sticks. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was gold. <clears throat> um, all right, my number three moment. Oh, we're going back. We're going way back. I'm thinking this is season two, maybe. This yeah, this is two. It might be one, something like that. I don't think it's three yet. But anyway, uh, it's when Bubbles moves into the van and um, uh, Leahy and Randy come over because they're mad because he's in there. And J-Rock's like, check this out, dog. You know, Bubbles is renting this ma for 12 bucks a month, you know, which makes this an income property, you know. And then when, when pretty soon when me and T get water up in this fucking shit, gonna fall in the sink, you know, he just starts going off at him, and then, um, uh, I'm trying to 
trying to remember. Oh, I didn't write it down, man. He says something at the end of it that was, uh, I don't remember, dude, but it was so funny. Fuck, dude, I didn't write it down. I thought I wrote it down. Shit. I feel stupid. Then this motherfucker's gonna fall under the same jurisdiction as every other trailer up in this ma. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you and that 15 cheeseburger eating Rico Suave looking motherfucker go on because he ain't beating nobody. Can I get 15 half eaten cheeseburgers to go? You know what I'm saying? But go watch that episode. Uh, that scene is hilarious. I can't remember what he says at the end now. I'm stoned and I didn't write it down. <laughs> but it's hilarious. So, you're baked as shit right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, right. this will my help. next, this will my next one. Actually, you mentioned this scene earlier, but this is a different part of it. So, getting arrested for real for the album cover. So he's he's making all these claims as he's in handcuffs. Like, I, I shot somebody. You're, uh, I'm a bad motherfucker. And the, the, I, I know he didn't say those things, but the last part I know, and I th always thought it was hilarious. And I'm on crack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Yo, man. Time, man. There's all kinds of gunfire and yo, shit going on, man. I'm calling the fucking cops right I, now. This is time. This I, is every fucking chance oh, yes. right now. Oh, yes. And yo, make sure you got the camera. Ready. Make sure you get the shot. This, this, this is the album cover. I'm cover, my fucking album. Jay, come on, man. Seriously, yo. Get in the character, motherfucker. We worked all this hard for this shit. Yo, the cops are here. I got this shit. Smoke the crack, put it I don't give a fuck what you do. The album. Sick of the album cover. All right. Let's go. Come on, but tell me what the hell's going on here. I'll tell you what's going on, bitch. You know bitch, you call me bitch. My face, so I shot the place up. I know you didn't call me bitch. And right, those man. are my bitches over there. And I'm on crack. You know what I'm saying? Crack. See that pipe? That's real shit. You know what I'm saying? Keep shooting, T. I got to see my baby. fucking T coming out. You know what I'm saying? Produced by Detroit Velvet Smooth. I'm saying Sunny Bell, hard as fuck. Hold it down, Jay Reason. Oh, fuck Sunny Bell. What the fuck was that? Shit, man. What are you doing, Jayron? What's that real crack? He was smoking. Not real crack. Here, man. You want some chips? Yeah, he's just spitting off things in the mouth to try to make it sound worse. You know, and uh, you quit getting pictured. He's like <laughs> trying to pose with a gun and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that goofy smirk on his face. That was your number two, right there, right? Yeah. All right, my number two. We've already talked about it with you and I. Kind of talked about it. It was it's microphone assassin, and I mean that whole episode. Uh, we can't like. Um, like, like I said, you can't just pick moments in it, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the episode that J-Rock gets caught when he's getting changed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and freaking Corey and Trevor are peeping in the window. They're in there watching him. They, they, they're watching him while he's cracking. Yeah, while you're Good. watching him jerk off. Yeah, yeah. They're... Jamie! Jamie, your friends are here. Jamie? Turn down that damn music. I'm pressing into your thing. Come on, Jamie. <laughs> shit off, motherfucker! I was getting changed, you know what I'm saying? I don't want that shit on TV! What do you I don't want motherfuckers seeing me getting changed, Turn you know what I'm saying? Off. He's pulling his gold. I don't fucking pulling care. What the fuck are you doing, J-Rock? I was getting changed, motherfucker! Change my ass, you're you fucking not cranking knocking it. motherfuckers! That was fucked. That was a bit fucked. It wasn't that fucked, you know what I'm saying? I was getting changed. What's going on? Listen, man, I got some good news for you. Get cleaned up, meet me back at the flea market. I. Peace, bub. Don't touch me. <laughs> you motherfuckers ain't gonna tell nobody that I was getting no, changed, right? Christ, no, Christ, no. They're watching him jerk, dude, and he busts the rap, you know, fucking talking about how it, it, <laughs> it, can, happen, it can happen to you because it happened to me and T. Dude, I love it how he always adds T to everything, dude. T got caught jacking out, too, because fucking J-Rock did. Oh, you remember there's that part where they're walking around and T comes around the corner... J Rock, what's this here? I got you got caught masturbating, fool. Like he's yelling, and J Rock's like, No, nah, man, no, nah, what are you talking about? As soon as he gets to me, like, Who is it here, motherfucker? Yeah, I just can caught you the fuck up, you know? <laughs> it is true, though. Getting getting caught doing that is fucking humiliating. Yeah, it happened to me when I was 15. I got caught by some peers of mine. Peers, really? Yeah. Were, yeah. You, were you at school or something? No, no, no. I was at a summer camp. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was in my private place and area, and some dude, like, I, I got busted. It happened. Oh, man, he it, didn't tell it. It could happen to you because it happened to me and Morgie. Did, <laughs> did he tell anyone? Uh, 
Well, I mean, yeah, I think so. A few people fucking knew that was around there, but like, it was whatever. Yeah, well, come on, man. I mean, you're 15 years old. How can you yeah. be abstinent for the two whole two weeks? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. can't be yeah. done. And then you grow up, and it gets to the point where you're like, whatever. Nowadays, if you walked in, I probably wouldn't even skip a stroke. You know, I'd be like, "What are you looking at, dude? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Take a picture. It'll last longer, dude. Fuck." <laughs> Uh, it's happens you get old and dirty. You stop giving a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yep, exactly. So my last one is um. Well, you 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 alluded to it earlier, but Ricky goes to his place to take all that electrical equipment because of uh, losing all his money, and they grab they grab the keyboard and when he presses it, it's like J Rock baby, J Rock baby, J Rock baby. J Rock baby. <laughs> J Rock baby. J Rock baby. J Rock baby. Take that shit, dog. I actually one time I watched that clip on YouTube and I went a bit, like back like repeatedly just to listen to that, which is I know sounds crazy, but I've done it. That's how much I love this show. Think little things like that, and I, I I enjoy them seeing them over and over again. J Rock baby. J Rock baby. J Rock baby. Take that shit, dog. I'm telling you, Morgan, one day I'll get a sound sound effects board, and you know what? I'll put the J Rock baby on there just for you, all right? J Rock baby. J Rock baby. J Rock baby. J Rock baby. Rock, baby. Rock, baby. That shit, dog. I should have thought to um. I mean, I we could cut theme. it into the. Oh yeah, you could uh in the in the theme song somewhere. Oh, yeah. Well, there is a way to do it. Um, maybe. I mean, yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, whatever you think about it, but I uh, not that the, it's not kick ass enough, you know? Yeah. You know, the only other thing I'd say the theme song is probably missing is some Leahy. Randy. I am the liquor. Wait, oh yeah. I did, I, there was a clip of Leahy in there originally, but it was just getting too long. Was it? Like, I think, I think like an intro song should be like maybe well, it, half a second. No, I mean half a minute or... 45 minutes, 45 seconds, I think. 45 that, <laughs> yeah, uh, going to listen. You know, that's true. Yeah. That's true. The short can be cool. But and here's the thing. If, if if we had one that was a little longer, you can always splice it in the middle and use part of it for the intro and part of it for the uh, yeah, that's outro. True too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, if you had a minute and a half, you could just 45 on you know, each end or whatever. And so, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so let me go ahead and bang through my, my five. I got five honorable mentions tonight. I mean, because there's so much amazing material with J-Rock. It's not like some where it might be a little more difficult. Like, we still barely scratch the surface on funny shit with J-Rock, guaranteed, you know? Um, let's see here. Okay, so top five or five honorable mentions. Number five. Uh, I sp oh when when he's at the court he's leaving that court he's sitting there with teen he's like I spin more rhymes <laughs> than a lazy Susan <laughs> and I'm innocent until my guilt is proven peace Son fucking Sunny Vale straight the fuck up. <laughs> There's two things motherfuckers gotta know about J to the ROC, straight up, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I spin more rhymes than a lazy Susan, and I'm innocent until my guilt is proven. Peace. Represents Sunnyvale, straight the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The way you said it was really funny. Yeah. This shit is dope and shit right there. I love that shit. All right. Number four. Uh, when he's being arrested, uh, when he's doing uh, Trailer Park, J-Rock's Trailer Park, Greasy Trailer Park Girls Gone Wild, and um, when he's getting arrested, and he's like, hold on, I got to turn off my smoke machine. I got to get it. And like he's, <laughs> As they're trying to arrest him and carry him off, he's like, got this big smoke machine, and he's blaring it, smoking it in everybody's face, and he's got it up inside the fucking the police car with him. Remember, it's all smoking up the cab in there. You're talking about torso? Come back. Let's go, Jamie. What well, for? Come on. We didn't do nothing, man. Come on. I gotta grab my smoke machine. Wait, you know it's saying? evidence. No, Take you know what I'm saying? Go. It's a fire hazard if I leave Look, this shit going. easier the hard way. Which way do you want to go? Come on. I ain't going nowhere. You're going with me. Tell me what I'm arrested for, you man. Are you gonna tell me what I'm being arrested for? This is bull-ish. Put him inside. What am I, doing? she's touching me in a sexual way. Any motherfucker want to tell me why it is I'm being arrested with my candy? We'll I can't even this. breathe up in this piece. Open the door, motherfucker. <laughs> That's just hilarious. Uh, number three. Um, 
oh, uh, it's a really quick scene. It's when Bubbles is living in that van later on, and then they're sitting there, and they all show up late night to watch TV on Bubbles' little TV that J-Rock just sets up in there, and he call he calls it, and I quote, uh, J-Rock's don't pay a cent event because <laughs> it's free cable. <laughs> yeah, there was, uh, there's a department store, well, mostly a furniture store here in Canada called Leon's, and that that's where that came yeah, from. They yeah. had don't pay a cent where you you get all the shit and then you don't start paying until six months when you, I think you have to pay it all. I guess so that yeah that deal exists here. Yeah. Uh, number two honorable mention is when uh, the Bible pimp steals all the money with uh, Tan- Tanya, the hot chick with the blonde hair, and uh, when they all go to the strip club to get the money back and fucking uh, J. Ross, I got this. Uh, hold on, Jules. He's like. On the door knocks, then he, then he walks inside. He's like, Rock pile up in this mop. Hey. Got this, Julian. You know what I'm saying? Rock pile up in this mop. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're all hard. Like, Rock pile's here. Let's be fucking. What's up, motherfuckers? And just like I can remember being with my boys back in the day doing shit like that, like when we roll so to collect some shit, like or do something like come up in there fucking loud and hard, you know what I'm saying? That shit was great. Uh the number one uh honorable mention um is when Julian needs to buy the mushrooms because he wants to spike Sam during the fucking uh trailer park uh, supervisor election. Remember late he's all drunk and he's wearing the fifty five <laughs> jersey and he's trying to get the mushrooms and he's like, All right, get these mushrooms. All right, I need them in an hour. And J Rock's just like, Rock Pile gets you whatever you need. Rock will get you mushrooms in five minutes. What are we doing with the other 55 minutes, Jules? Right. Come back in five minutes. Need an hour. What are we going to do with the other 55 minutes? You know what I'm saying? That's how fucking hard the Rock Pile right. is. <laughs> you don't need no hour, Jules. We'll get them to you in five minutes, Jules. <laughs> All right. Then, here we go. Back to my number one uh, J Rock moment of all time. And it goes. Go ahead. Open your thing. Open your thing. Sorry. Hey, some of them bags are fucked, bro. Uh, all right. It goes back to, well, it's Countdown to Liquor Day, which we've already established, you know, and that's the first piece of Trailer Park Boys that I saw. So it's got a very special nostalgic feel to my heart. I saw it shortly after it came out. And that was my introduction. But anyway, it's in that movie, and it's at the grand opening of, of Success Autobahn. Um, and they're sitting there, and J-Rock's supposed to perform. And, like, no one's there. Like, pretty much. I mean, besides them. You know, T's there, Bubbles is there. You know, there's, like, two or three other people there. Uh, but slowly, they all start leaving. And J-Rock's trying to perform. He's starting to do that one song. And then uh, everyone starts leaving, and the T is like, we're leaving. And then he, like, te- freaking takes everything from him. And he's like, what are you doing? But he's like, there's, there's nobody here. We're going home. He's like, I'm trying to perform in the show. Don't be taking my mic. I'm performing. He's like, dude, there's nobody's here. He goes, what do you mean there's nobody's here? Bubbles is here, dog. <laughs> That's, like, right. that's it, man. And he's like, nobody's feeling it. And it was, dude, Bubbles is ever the, uh, uh, just a positive motivator. Like, he's, he walks up and goes, J-Rock, I was feeling it, but <laughs> That's positive thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, well, let's count down on Liquor Day now. Nope, not until I go drink. Oh, shit. I should go drink and watch Count Down on Liquor Day. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll do a special episode by myself from there. Or something, just set up my camera and record myself for like an hour or two until I get passed out. <laughs> and then make an episode out of it. To watch yeah. get drunk for a whole hour, yeah. Yeah, watch me get drunk while I watch Countdown on Liquor Day. Ooh, that would be fun, huh? Yes, in the comments, type below if you want to watch me get drunk while I watch Countdown to Liquor Day. Yeah, and then if a few of you say yes, or if enough people say yes, then we'll do it. <laughs> were, were you a fan of uh, WWF wrestling? Oh, dude, growing up, yeah, I loved it. Uh, I don't know what it is. Some years ago, I stopped watching it. I don't know why. I never s- stopped liking it. Like now, to this day, oh, I watched I, Golden Age, man. Yeah, you know, I watched all when I was younger. Um, I mean, probably my early twenties is when I stopped watching it. Uh, I mean, I've been to a couple events live. Uh, uh, Let's see here. Just a few months ago, WrestleMania. I watched WrestleMania with my son and Ryan Dugan, my buddy Ryan, who came on the show, um, and his oldest boy, Aiden. Uh, the four of us watched it, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. Like, there's no reason why I didn't. And 
but I haven't watched one episode since. And I've got Peacock, so I get an, a WWE Network through Peacock, so I can watch all the uh, pay per views for free and everything. Um, oh. Yeah, it's 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 cool. Uh, but I don't. And I, I can remember over the last fifteen years, I've said, "Why am I, Why did I ever stop watching wrestling?" I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, I know it's fake, but I've known it's fake forever. Like, it's 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 a drama. That, you know what I'm? And you know what's funny? Like, uh, I used to. I, I can remember towards when I when I was still watching towards the end, I was more into the arguments and the people talking shit and the drama. Like, oh, than I was. Yeah, than I even was the matches anymore because like. I mean, it, they've done it. Like, I've seen people fly off that already a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I don't know. It was but, so exciting, man. Remember how exciting it was when you're like a big wrestling fan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But I felt myself slowly getting, like, becoming more and more out of sports. Like, I used to love sports, watch sports all the time. Uh, watched baseball. I used to watch a little bit of hockey when I could. I played. I I, I liked soccer. I played soccer a lot growing up, so I watched some soccer every once in a while. Uh, but I watched football religiously and basketball pretty religiously and baseball as much as I could. And nowadays, like I don't watch any baseball. Um, I'm I barely ever watch basketball now, uh, but I do still catch myself checking to see what happened. Baseball um, is not really America's favorite pastime anymore, is it? It's no, not, no, not at all. It's, it's totally football. Football yeah, has it's, been it's the case. time. Uh, and football is the one I definitely watch the most of um, and I follow the most of. I still uh, am pretty solid into that one. Uh, I, like, yeah, I don't want to miss any games, uh, you know. So, But besides that, like, I, I really – don't care. You know what I'm really into now, which is kind of—it's weird, but it's like my favorite. My—I mean, I've been watching it for like fuck eleven seasons now, and it's on their thirteenth. I've seen them all because I watched the first two before, but I didn't catch the first two when they first started, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's American Ninja Warrior. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, that shit. I remember American, seeing... American Ninja Warrior. Dude, you got it. It's like the obstacle course thing, man. You got to check it out. Like you should Google that or something. Look, uh, NBC. Um, it's on NBC, uh, but it's just people from like all over and they come and it's these, it's crazy obstacle course that they try to compete on. And, you know, you go, go to the end, uh, through the qualifiers and the finals and the, you know, and all that stuff, there's like multiple weeks of it and different challenges and you get to the end, you can win a million dollars if you do it. And it's just, it's really cool. It's one of those sports that like everyone kind of roots for everyone. Like everyone pushes each other. It's almost like t-ball in the sense of where everyone roots for everybody everyone's a winner but it's not like t-ball because i i don't i don't like how in t-ball like everyone gets a trophy you know that's pretty bullshit (laughs) yeah like i'm sorry that's just a bad lesson like no you not everyone wins you guys i'm sorry everyone can root for everyone and you can all go good job but you shouldn't get a trophy for coming in 17th place you know (laughs) Uh, and so Ninja Warriors like that. Like everyone roots for everyone. Everyone tells their stories. A lot of people, you know, they use this the way to get healthy, fight, uh, uh, you know, health issues, uh, raise awareness for like, let's say their wife's got some sort of cancer and they're trying to raise awareness. And, and so they go out and like all different kinds of, they, and they just start a kid, like kids run. There's a, a 15 year old and 16 year old kids and do some of them kids are bad, bro. They're swinging from them things, flying through the air, grabbing the the bar, fucking like, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 six two, like uh, two sixty five, at a solid. And that's me. That's me. I'm I'm a bit heavy. Uh, uh two twenty five is probably me, good in shape. Two twenty, you know, and uh, all these dude, all these people. There's like there's like four people in this whole that do this whole thing over six feet. Everybody's under six feet. They're all short and little. You know, like like most of the dudes are like five seven, five nine, weighing 145, 180 pounds, 170 pounds, like that. Uh, but it's cool. Um, so I've been way into that. I, I always joke with my my brother, my one brother, that um, it's gonna take over the world as like a new sport. 
uh, like every, it basically in the future there's going to be no sports and there's going to be no wars. It's going to be kind of like the Hunger Games, but it's going to be American Ninja Warrior. And when you fall off the obstacles, they fall into a pool of water. Well, instead of a pool of water, they'll fall into like a pit of spikes or something or acid or something. And like it'll be to the death. So like it, 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 when we go to war, it'll like Hunger Games type shit, like all the countries will send their representatives and basically whichever country wins, like wins the fucking Hunger Game Wars or whatever, the American Ninja Warrior Game Wars. <laughs> American yeah. Ninja it'll be called American Ninja Wars then. That's right. You mentioned you were talking about drinking for a minute there. Do you know how much booze Andre the Giant could take in? Oh like, my uh, god. Uh, what's his? Was it Randy Rhodes? One of those old school wrestlers said he watched. He once watched him drink 108 beers, dude. Yeah, you know those yeah. tiny, those tiny V8 cans. That's what a can of like Michelob was for him. Like he just, it's too big to get drunk on a six, six pack, man. Yep, yep. I've seen it. He picks up a can like and it looks like this yeah. thing in his hand. You know, so he has can look like that in his hand. You know, and. uh yeah, yeah, I know. That, I know that he he drink like fifty five beers in the morning with, <laughs> with with like a case of wine, like a box of wine or or a big jug of wine or something. Uh, he wind up drinking a couple bottles of liquor in the afternoon. Uh, it was yeah, it's it's ridiculous, crazy stuff. I mean, I used to be able to put down bo- bottles. I feel yeah. I, I I used to be able to do like two fifths in a day or like a half gallon in a day when I was younger. Uh, but that's about it, and that's a lot, dude. That's no <laughs> people. That's not maybe, maybe your height has something to do with the fact of of <clears throat> height, height, body mass, process at all. Height, body mass, and amount of blood. You know, it's all. You know, it's got to go through it, the whole body. You know, it goes through the whole, the whole body filters. It goes through everything. So uh, that does play an effect. You know, it really does. You know, if you're four foot seven and ninety two pounds. Trust me, it's gonna take a lot less than that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I was—I uh, had this thought about. Uh, it's one of the random thoughts. I had nice. this thought about Randy. I think he's—he's he's not just passionate about cheeseburgers. He's a real addict, and I don't—I'm not saying that hyperbolically to exaggerate or embellish. I because he—he's even been open about prostituting himself for cheeseburgers if you'll prostitute yourself for something you are an addict and you have no self-control you are a slave to that addiction you have a suck dick for some weed yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, he's you're got, right he's got you're a real right. addiction problem you're right uh yeah he totally is him and phil are straight addicts they're addicted to cheeseburgers there are people out there who, who like to eat the same things all the time but to eat I don't know. I think most people would get sick of eating the same thing, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. I would, I, I would probably hate cheeseburgers if I had to do that. But he, he's a, he's a junkie. He's a real junkie. Eventually, yeah. I mean, I would imagine. Uh, I mean, if you kept changing the condiments and the sauces and, you know, uh, like it might change, you know, but if you can't change the meat, if you have to do just ground beef, just burger all the time, like, yeah, you get tired of burgers. For, for sure. For sure. If you can't do chicken once in a while or something, or maybe a fish sandwich once in a while or something, you know, like, yeah, for sure. Fuck that. But meth uh, addicts never get tired of taking meth, and Randy never gets tired of eating cheeseburgers. So. Uh, well, I, I doubt it's this, like the exact same meth every time, you know? It's like, oh, well, maybe, yeah, I guess. I mean, like the ultimately, weed's di- the, the weed's different every time. I mean, the only thing that's the same every time is tobacco and liquor. I think. Yeah, you're probably right because it's like, you know, the filling in an Oreo cookie is the same every time. They got a formula. Everything's carefully measured, so it always comes out the same. But I think probably with street drugs, you know, one person makes it one way, another person makes it in a slightly another different way. way. Yep. I know there are a lot. There, there are a lot of makers who. They either add uh, an excessive amount of whatever the element that keeps you high is, or they um, they or they lower it so that they'll have to buy more of it. But uh, yeah, it must it must all be slightly different when it comes to <coughs> math or crack or you know pills or anything. So 
Uh, so does that mean you want to do some random thoughts for a little bit, bud? Because I got a bunch yeah. of those. Well, I also, have, I also have another Randy thing because uh, I did post it on social media, but maybe most people listening haven't seen it. But I created this little image. It's a parody of the Michael Jackson's album Thriller. But this is Randy Bobindi, Griller. And <laughs> <laughs> here are the track that shit is hilarious. So, instead ahead. of want to be starting something, it's want to be eating something. Uh, number two, instead of baby be mine, burger be mine. Number, <laughs> <laughs> number three, instead of the girl is mine, the grill is mine. You know, remember Ricky stole his barbecue. The and popcorn go- grill is mine. <laughs> <laughs> grill is mine, mine, mine. <laughs> instead of Paul McCartney and Michael talking, it's like it's Ricky going, get the fuck out and fuck off. I want my barbecue, Ricky. <laughs> uh, the next one, uh, instead of beat it, heat it. I couldn't, I didn't want to put eat it because we are weird. Oh, Yankovic already did that. Yeah, uh, good call. Good call. Seven, instead of human nature, human pantry. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, uh, C, instead of PYT, pretty young thing, it's COR, crispy onion ring. <laughs> <laughs> Number which time, is, which is um, really funny. Because yeah. if you remember from like Countdown to Liquor Day and stuff, he's all about his onion rings for a he while. He was there. obsessed with those for a he little was while. Obsessed with those, dude. Maybe he yeah. was trying to. We- yeah, maybe it was like when like Duff McKay. Yeah. So, it- and the number nine um, instead of the lady of my life, it's the patties of my life. <laughs> Which is a woman's name, so that works perfectly too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> although I was thinking about like beef patties. No, so- no, no, no. I I know exactly oh, what yeah, you okay, mean. Yeah. I'm just saying it's also, uh, okay, yeah. you know, uh, Patty's also a woman's name. So it works. So it's the ladies and burger, you know, it works <laughs> for both. It's awesome. Um, here, I got here, I got some random thoughts. Okay, so here's one. Okay, so the letter B, the word B, and the, the insect, a B. Uh, why did they even have E's in the words? And are we even pronouncing them when we say B? Or are they silent? And we're just saying the letter B. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you got B, then you got to be or not to be, that's B-E. Then you got the bug, a B, which is B-E-E. Yeah, we do have a... Quite an, an excess of uh, silent letters. In our are words. they silent? Are we pronouncing them and we don't even realize it? Or are they silent and we're only saying the letter B? And if so, then why are they even there? Well, if, it, <laughs> uh, if it does call for like silence, then I would say that... Um, what was that I was thinking about? And oh, like, have you ever heard of people... They, so they say a word like, you know, what or which, W and H word... Yeah, so oh yeah, that, yeah. Like like whip, like whip. Yeah, they say H first. Where, what? Like yeah. it's people trying to, I guess, sound more sophisticated or something like that. But it's just yeah, really that, dumb. One never, that one I never quite got because yeah, you're saying it the other way, right? Whip, like whip. No, no. Yeah, she said whip. Like that's hard to say. The H. After the W is hard to say. Whip. <laughs> what? But, but, uh, but yeah, like the B, B. And are we supposed to hold it longer? Like, if we're supposed to say the E's, are we technically supposed to hold it longer? Like, so we go B, or like, for just the B, and then you got the B, and then you got B mm-hmm. for a bug. Like, I don't know. It's just like, you know? Yeah. Comment no, I don't below. think. I don't think or we're. Else I don't get. You know, it's like, are they silent? Are we saying them? Why are they even there if it's all the same sound? B. Like, why can't it just be a, a B? I guess it's just so you can d- differentiate. while... I know why. So you can differentiate while reading, because if you just put the letter B or just a B E, yeah. you know. I mean, I guess. But then again, if you're reading a sentence, you know. And you go, and then a B flew by. I, I hope you're not going to picture a letter B just 
fluttering by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, but, whatever. That was just something I thought of. It just fucking like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I, I have some uh, would you rathers, if you'd like to do uh, that. Sure, sure. Why don't you do some more? I didn't get really any would you rather, so why don't you do some would you rathers, and then I yeah, can do yeah. some, ra- I'll do some random thoughts, because I got like seven more of those, you know? So, you do some would you rathers for a minute, and then uh, and then we'll switch back. Go ahead, go. Okay. Tag your in. Would you rather get stabbed and have a rat placed in the wound so it can eat you away from the inside, or get stabbed and left for dead in the woods where maggots will eat away at you until you die? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> that was from last week's Human Monsters True Crime. Would you rather? Oh, I thought you meant the burp for a second there. That was from last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so I guess some maybe some of it gets stored, you know. Right? I got mackerel on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say uh, burping is Phil Collins' trademark. It is. It is, and we love Phil. There ain't nothing wrong with burping. I burp, I cough. You might even have heard me fart a couple times. I mean, <laughs> you. If you didn't, I think you'd probably explode. So. Uh, all right, what were we talking about? I lost my train of thought. Um. Oh, oh, okay, I remember. All right, so the rat or the uh, the maggots in the forest. Um. I don't know. Well, they only eat the rat, rat I guess. The rat, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because if it's right in your chest and gets you, I think you, you might go faster. It'd be really painful, but you might go faster. If if you were just cut up and left for maggots to get to you, you'd, you'd probably... That would probably take longer, I think. You'd wind up dying from just laying there before the maggots would kill you. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there was a medieval torture where uh, they put the criminal lying face down, and underneath it, there's like like a bowl or a basket with a rat, uh, rat inside. And it was and, metal, uh, yep, and they heat and, it. Yeah, and they, they heat it up to the point where the rat can't take it anymore, and then it bites its way through the person. That's a fucked up way to die. Yeah, so yeah. I think I'll get go for the maggots, because... They only feast on a part of you that has died. There's no nerve, so you can't feel pain. It's horrifying, but uh, that's that's what they go after. Um, so, so, you're, it, so are you implying that you would live if you went out there? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I think... Um, well, yeah, it's like, imagine you just got, like, shot several times and you can't get up. And uh, so... And because you've got those wounds, uh, maggots may come around at some point because... If you live long enough, then, uh, yeah, you can watch insects eat away at your flesh. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Maybe you could live. Yeah, Those maybe. Maggots. So, so yeah. Damn it. I think I picked the wrong one. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, all right, go ahead. What's, what's another one? Uh, would you rather be shot in the head with instant death? Or shot in the knee and left hundreds of miles away from the nearest hospital, suffering some of the most excruciating pain imaginable. Getting hit in the knee, even if you just bang it into a, like the edge of a coffee table, it fucking hurts like hell. I don't know if you've ever done that, but oh, yeah. uh, it's a very sensitive area. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I would definitely take the kneecap because, I mean, I'm pretty sure I could we could survive. You know, worst case, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, if yeah. it. If if I have to, I mean, I'll pack that bitch with with mud and, and find some shit to fucking wrap it, you know, some big old leaves or something, and we'll get to uh, get to hiking, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, shit, if it's that bad, bro, fuck around and let me find some matches in my pocket. I'll start a forest fire. Someone will see me. <laughs> and that's a bad joke. I live in California. That's a bad joke, everybody. Don't laugh at that. Yeah, I know. We're always, we're always on fire over here. Yeah, I think I'd go for, um, well, I mean, in either scenario, uh, oh, yeah, you're going to suffer, but I guess, you know, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably take uh, the shot in the knee, because even though it's, like, going to be hell on earth until you get treatment. Uh, you're still 
you're you're still alive yeah so people yeah so it's a safe area to get shot in you may have to replace your knee too but uh well keep them coming bud rapid fire what do you got all right say you're a serial killer would you most likely you're a serial killer yeah would you rather kill for revenge or for money Uh, well, I mean, money's more practical. You don't have to tie emotions and all that. I mean, get your money on. Get your, but revenge is probably more satisfying. Mm-hmm. Have, have we all <laughs> had someone in our lives that we hated so much that we caught ourselves, like, <laughs> visualizing yourself oh, torturing sure. and killing sure. them? Sure. Sure. Everyone's thought, thought. That's just normal. Yeah. It's just normal people. We don't act upon thoughts. Our brain will have impulsive thoughts about anything. Uh, well, I think uh, self-control is the key. You have to. Yeah. You know, there was a it. poll that came out, and I think it was by um, Pew Research, like a really prestigious firm too. They interviewed a huge swath of the population, and they found out I think it was ninety-two percent of them admitted to having a homicidal fantasy at least once in their life. So, really? Yeah. So it's pretty. Co- it is common. I mean, especially considering that during the complete uh, trajectory of our species throughout time, murder at one time was was legal. There was no police, nothing. So you could totally get away with it. And uh, so we went from normalizing murder and just living with it to suddenly deciding it was wrong. So M- imagine. Yeah. That's true. It would have been. It must have been fucking a nightmare to live back then, right? If you're a woman, you're you're definitely getting raped. And if you're a guy, uh, then you know uh, you can get shot, you can get beaten up. Nobody can do anything about it. Well, I I would say I, I would I don't know if, if you're a woman, you're guaranteed. I don't think every woman in history was raped back in the old days. Well, no, uh, I'm not saying all of them, but. Yeah. Uh, and and the thing is, is yeah, you could be shot or whatever, but that could happen now. Just just don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, uh, whoa, whoa, what happened? Half my body disappeared. Yeah, that's weird. There huh? it is. Why do I keep cutting out? Am I too far away? I'm trying to scoot down a little. Right, would I you rather? Like I need to sit back though. Uh, would you oh, rather right. be burned alive in a house fire or be thrown into a vat of hydrochloric acid? Uh, acid, I guess. I think that would probably be faster. Yeah, I would too. I would just make sure to uh, land head first so it can just melt my head, melt my brain, and then I don't have to suffer much anymore. Yeah. Because I, I don't know how long it takes for that acid to dissolve a body but i think when jeffrey dahmer did it took days Uh, (laughs) yeah but i mean that's bones and everything like it's gonna eat through your eyeballs pretty fucking quickly you know and then that's right into your brain and once it goes through there and into your brain you're dead so i i imagine you're dead pretty quickly uh and then, yeah, it's going to take days for the bones and everything to break down, I guess. Okay. Uh, the next one is, would you rather be beaten by cops or in jail? So cops versus inmates, which would you prefer to be beaten by? Uh, cops, I guess. Yeah, I'd go for that, too, because... In jail, I mean, are fights ever just fights, or is it basically a murder on a murder on hold? You know? No, no, no. Um, there's plenty of fights and whatnot. Uh, like I said, it just it depends um, on uh, on like level four yards and stuff. Uh, no, there's no fights. It's it's a hands off policy. So anything you know worth fighting, you stab. Uh, so. No, but on like ones and twos, oh yeah, there's tons of fights. Threes, there's a little bit of both. Um, some three yards have hands-off policies too. Uh, I heard. I haven't 
been on one that had a hands-off policy. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. It's it's it, it's also different. If you're getting jumped by um, inmates, you're getting removed. And if you're getting removed, there's a reason. And uh, you're then you know you're no good too. So you go anywhere and they find out. It's gonna are, be more the same. Are they gonna you know? think of you as a snitch for doing that? Not necessarily. It depends on what you're being removed for. If you're being removed for snitching, then yeah. yeah. But if you're being removed because you stole something or you ran up too much debt or you've got something sneaky in your past that you get found out about, you know, uh, like things that aren't good, you know, um, like bad charges, you know, things involving kids and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, any of those things can get you removed. And then, I mean, but then again, anything in your past, it's going to follow you wherever you go. They're going to find you regardless. So, uh, so yeah, that's why. I mean, if you're getting beat by the cops, you're just getting beat up for whatever reason. Like maybe you mouthed off getting arrested, maybe you're you know picking a fight, maybe you're involved in some other bullshit. Who knows? But it tends to end when you get to jail. Uh, you know, cops don't remove you from every tank and holding cell they have you and beat you up every time they see you just because Johnson uh, and Anderson beat you up one time. You know, I mean, they might, they might. Oh, but, well, uh, when you were inside, uh, did did ever was there ever a cop who you know broke the law and ended up having to be in that prison? Because I know that. Uh, no, and they wouldn't put them with general pop with no. They put them over, in usually on a, a SNY yard, which is a sensitive needs yard, which is the new PC, <clears throat> or they put them uh, like they have other prisons like. Like where cops go, you know, they have special yards that cops go to. They don't. They don't just take Johnson for, that used to work cell block D and then put him in cell block D. It doesn't quite work like that. That dude would be they're, dead. They're gonna shank him, right? They're gonna oh, kill. quick. Yeah, they would for sure. They wouldn't make him instantly a criminal. You know what I'm saying? He'd still be a cop, just on the wrong side. So they definitely keep those dudes separate. Yeah, he's like a professional snitch in a way. When you think about it, that's what he—it's what cops do for a living, right? They report you to the authorities and take you to them for justice. Okay, my next one is: uh, Would you rather be raped by a woman or a man? Now, just there's one thing that uh, I've been raped, raped by a woman once. You were raped by a woman? Yeah, I was passed out, and she fucking was riding me at a party, wow. and two homegirls I knew. Threw her off me and then like got her out of the room and made her leave and they and then they said that later on they went back and found the girl in the room doing it again while I'm just on the bed like holy fuck you know so anyone who tells you that uh, men can be yes they can be uh, the only thing is is frankly I really like whatever you know god damn it uh, I don't remember I, I I don't remember it and so it never affected me you know what i'm saying like see, see i know i'm gonna start fantasizing about women doing that to me pretty soon <laughs> were you traumatized by it or you, were you no, but no, was she hot no. uh, yeah you know and fuck she wanted the d so badly wanted the d. i mean for all i know we were doing it i might have passed out during it you yeah know, she just kept, and she just kept going for all i know you know like i don't remember and so, I mean, so it is what it is. It's like, it's whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm a dude. I don't care. As long as I didn't find out that, you know, she had one strapped on fucking hitting me from behind. You know, <laughs> my, my ass wasn't sore the next day. So I guess I'm okay, right? That's all I care about, you know? Like, if a chick wants to violate my junk with her mouth, like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to fucking be mad at you, you know? Uh but, don't violate that. I no, like if I woke up and that was violated, then then there'd be some issues. <laughs> then I might report something. <gasps> My back door. <laughs> Someone kicked the door in. <laughs> I uh, I would actually choose the man, and the reason is this: 
So if a woman's like raping you, say she's using a, you know, a dildo because she doesn't have a dick, of course, she can do that for as long as she wants. She could do it for a full hour, whereas most guys come pretty fast, I think, you know. True, but if a chick straps one on and rails you, you're technically still not gay. Well, if you, yeah, I mean, if you enjoy pegging too, then you know, you know it's not rape. So. I mean, I'm not condoning letting a chick rail you, you know. <laughs> but if it happened, I would still be able to argue for you. Like, if I was your court, your representative in the court of public opinion, I would be able to argue the case that you're still not gay. If that was something you're worried about, but if you don't care and you're like whatever, like if you are gay, you know, then and so then you know, and I don't mean you in particular. I'm talking about the the, the proverbial you, you know, that you's out there watching everybody. Uh, I mean, if you are, then fuck it, whatever, you know. But if you're not and you don't want to be like me, I'm not gay and I don't want to be gay, so I would be concerned. Like if I got railed, would I, you know? Uh, but if a chick did it technically still not gay you know because that's a chick yeah (laughs) sometimes women like to stick their finger up the guy's ass as some kind of as a bonus feature i guess i don't know the the male g-spot's up there yeah that's true maybe that's what they're going yeah you never you never had a finger up there while you're getting head before no not yet (laughs) what you you don't know what you're missing out on bro i i had well, I, I guess what turns me on about that is just the spirit behind it. Like, I mean, like I'm gonna make this guy come in every orifice imaginable. Right? I mean, it's a girl fucking putting all in all effort. You know, that's oh, a yeah. it's it's a it's an MVP type uh, performance. It really is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, my next one is: uh, Would you rather be hit by a car deliberately? Or dragged by a pickup truck with no clothes on. Oh, hit by hit by a car. Yeah, yeah me too. Definitely. Sometimes people are not really that injured by getting hit by a car. Um, well, usually minor injuries. It's not like it's very different from driving a car into another car. But getting hit, a lot of people survive that. Hey, depending on what type of car it is, if it's a small car with a low hood, all you got to do is just hop at the right time. And if you get a majority of your body up and it just clips underneath it, you're just going to hit that hood and roll over. You might maybe fuck your ankle up a little bit, you know, your shoulder when you hit the windshield. But you're not going to, you know, the only time you're going to get really fucked up is if it's doing like 100 because then you'll go flipping through the air. Or if it's a big vehicle, you know, that you can't hop up over hood height and you get hit by the front. Yeah. All right. Uh, would you rather be? <laughs> this is one I posed to a woman, so maybe we could skip it. But would you rather be gang raped for the dark web or killed in a snuff film? Gang raped on the dark web or killed in a snuff film? I guess killed in a snuff film because if <laughs> either of those are happening, I, I want to die. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, death or trauma. Well, well, actually, let me rephrase that. I wouldn't mind the gang rape on the dark web because we can do a reverse gang bang. I'll take on six of you ladies. Let's do this thing. (laughs) (laughs) There's enough of me to go around. I'm here to please. Don't worry. I don't finish until you do. Why do I get the (laughs) feeling that women who have done gang bang porn must must not have their fathers in their lives like that's if you were a good father you your your daughter wouldn't end up doing that right i mean i imagine they say statistically you know strippers and prostitutes and 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 uh porn stars you know, don't have a positive male influence uh, not they may not be present or they're a negative influence you know what i'm saying if they are present uh but i doubt all of them there's probably some that are really good girls grew up at a nice catholic girl school or something there's a lot of the you know pent up stuff shit like that you know probably had some really good nice mom and dad but just uh had somewhat of a sheltered life and when they hit like 19 uh you know took their first hit of ecstasy and got the thumb stuck up their bum and 
<laughs> it's been over from there, you know? Like, just like what happened to my friend Kevin Sykes. No, I'm teasing. That didn't happen to Kevin. Uh, I'm just talking trash to him. Uh, I told him I think I'm going to mention him at some point of every episode. And I may be nice or I may talk trash, but I'm going to mention him till he actually comes on and joins us. Because he, like I said, he is my oldest, bestest friend. He's my Randy DeLay. He, but like I said, he's just, it's hard to get him to do anything and commit. He works a lot. He does. I'm not going to lie. He's a busy guy. But like, it takes years to get the dude to come over to hang out. You know, it's like, it's, it's just hard. He's just, he, he's kind of a, kind of a flake at times. Ooh, I said it. I said it, Kevin. Kevin Sykes, you, you hear me? Jerry, what, do, what does he do? Big fucker. Uh, right now, if I, if I remember correctly, he's working at one of the wineries down in Napa. Oh, yeah. He does winery work a lot. Uh, he's my liquor man. He makes he, he makes his own moonshine. And, like, so all the time we talk about liquor, like, and I keep saying that's one of the reasons I go, he's the guy we want to talk to. He would be able to tell you the process on how to do that. Uh, but when he does, when he's not doing that, like, he works at round table, works at round table for a while, just pizza and stuff. Like, you know, like, I've worked at five different pizza restaurants. We used to flirt about opening our own. Between the two of us, we've worked at like fucking eight or nine different pizza restaurants, maybe ten, between just the two of us, you know. Uh, but anyway, as you were saying, that was my talk about Kevin for a minute. Now we can move on. Yeah, I'd prob- I would probably do the snuff film because if, yeah. if you know, this is gang rape, it's not, and it's not, you know, how porn stars would feel to rape, refer to rape. This is like real rape, like in prison. Um, so and you'll never recover from that psychologically. The rest of your life, that's just going to fuck with your head. You're going to have PTSD. So I think it'd be much better just to get killed in the snuff film. And that way I'm not around to experience all that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, yeah, I was just joking about the reverse gangbang thing. Like, of course, that'd be fun. But I know, I know what you meant. And, uh, yeah, the snuff film would have to be. Because, like I said, if either one of those is happening... Well, if, if I'm getting held down and six dudes are taking their turns on me, regardless of how it's going, I want to, I want to die. I want to die. And, uh, I'm probably going to kill some of them. You know what I do? First thing I do, uh, I got a tight ass. My, I had a nice onion back here. I got some butt. I tighten my cheeks so hard. I break his fucking dick right off. Snuff off right up in there. And then I fucking, I don't know. I'd bite some shit. I fucking be on. You, Get your dick near me. You ain't getting it back. Know that. I'll bite the motherfucker off. Hara. Oh, oh yeah, that uh, the, the little guy. Yeah. Jail shorts. Yeah, that guy was fucked up. He was crazy. He's, he's like, he, yeah, he's attached to Ricky's crotch for like hours and the whole time just like, Rawr. Oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. What did, they, what did they call him? That's in the jail series. That's in the jail series, just those of us who don't know the reference. That was his um, trademark. I think that's... He kind of got a name was involved it with Pit, it. Was it Pitbull? Lockjaw? Something like that. They called him something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cock, cockbiter? Oh, no, it wasn't that. I think it was like Pitbull or something. Something like that. It was a little dude. You know? <laughs> Short guy. Uh, and yeah, he liked to... He bites you right on the fucking dick. Yeah, R- well, Ricky's had, I think Ricky's had three dick-related injuries. So there was a, there's the one where the snake bit it. There's the one, mm-hmm. I think it was episode, I think it was season 12, where Mo was playing with the gun and he shot him in, in the crotch. Shot him in the, shot him in the sack, yep. <laughs> okay, Motel, no big deal. Just sit there like that. That's great. What the hell? That's it. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Here comes Grampy. What in the fuck is going on here, boys? Okay, just out on the groundy woundy for Grampy Wampy, all right? Ricky, how the fuck did he get that? No idea. Well, you better hope the fucking safety's on. Of course the fucking safety's on. I'm not an idiot. Oh, fuck, he just turned it off. I'm gonna have to go in. Oh, Ricky, Ricky, what are you doing? Fuck, the habit. I'm sorry. How in the Christ did fucking Mo get a handgun? He must have found it in the car. I don't know. I've been looking for that gun for three years. I love that gun. Oh, he's got your favorite gun, does he? Okay, Mo. Just point it at the ground. Just point it at the ground. Grampy's gonna come and get it, okay? Ricky, be okay? careful. That's it. Just pass it to Grampy. That's a good boy. 
Ah! 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 Jesus, this fucking horse cock! Mo just blew my fucking ass off! Ricky! Oh my fuck! What? Ah! Ricky! It's okay, Mo. Grampy's okay. It's okay, little buddy. It's not your fault. Grampy's just fucked in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like both your knots are still there, Ricky, but there's a big hole in your duffel bag. <laughs> hey, sweetie. What the fuck happened? Oh, is he okay? I can't believe you let Mo play with a handgun. I didn't let him. He must have found it somewhere. All I can say, Ricky, is wow. It's not now, Sarah, please. Wow. Let's go. Okay, Ricky. Let me just have a look. There is one little tool thing hanging out the side here. Oh, fuck me, Jesus! Jesus Christ, it's connected to something, is it? Yeah, my nut! Oh, sorry, Ricky. Here, just... It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of damage to the inside. Just get that, just... Looks workable. Well, glue the fucking thing shut, man. Glue me? Yeah. I think um, there's more. Um... Oh, I'm thinking there is, too. Uh... So and then he had the little guy bit his bit him on the cock. Oh yeah, that's it. That's uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I feel like there's more though. There's something else, dude. There's got to be more. Because Ricky's cock comes up way too much. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, because he's dude. He's he showed it to Julian and Bubbles way more than just those times. I'm look at it because something was wrong with it. You know. Oh, in the jail series, just one of the shorts the other day. He had a hair growing out of the middle of it. There was a hair growing out of his pee hole. Wow. Yeah, he thought he was dying because because hair was growing out from inside places, out outside, and like not just like out of his ear. And so yet he, he had bubbles come into the visiting room and he showed him, and like and it was like this long, like he plucked it out. It came out from deep down inside there. <laughs> uh, didn't he get it sunburned or uh, something like that? I think it's a bugle trumpet, Ricky. Will you shut the fuck up? Shut the fuck up! Good morning, Sunnyvale! Breakfast will be served at, oh, 700 hours sharp. Thank you. And have a safe and alcohol-free day. I'm kind of glad you woke me up in your bugle trumpet. So I got a 15-drink piss I'm about to flush out of my fucking body. <laughs> Ah, oh, you can keep me out of the park, but you can't keep my cock out. Is that right? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Ugh! Real men don't try to electrocute other men's cocks when they're trying to piss you! Mushroom titted whore bat! Oh my fuck, that hurts! Fuck! Oh, Trim, don't look. Daddy's cock it melted. <laughs> uh, the next one was uh, some sadistic billionaire issues this indecent proposal. Either you get whipped BDSM style every day, or you get straight out beaten every day. You get paid a million dollars to do this for a year. I'll take the beaten. I can deal with I I can deal with punches in the face and the stomach better than like whips on the back and stuff. I never really like that. I've been to a couple BDS clubs. That girls try like, eh, the whip on the back. I I just I never liked it. So it just it, it hurt a bit much for me. Just yeah, I I don't I have no interest in that either. Yeah, I'd rather get punched in the face. So I'll take the beat. What, what's so bad about fucking? I mean, come on. Wait, how did these people get to the point where they thought? This really sucks. How about we whip each other and tie each other to the wall? <laughs> that would make about, it better. <laughs> how about I tie you up and beat you with a waffle iron? You know, let's do that instead. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to put a dog collar around your neck. Are you going to be bored then, you fuck? I, I, knew, I, I, I knew a girl who liked it when I spanked her ass with um, cactus. I'd, cactus. Go to the Mexican, I'd go to the Mexican restaurant or Mexican market and buy just one of those big pieces of cactus. And um, still had the fucking prickles and all and everything. And she wanted me to fucking run on her ass with that. And then, of course, 
you know, I'd take the fucking quills out afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but like, yeah, it was weird. It was her thing. Like, she liked it. So, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to yuck your gum. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, you want a fucking cactus up against the ass, like, fuck, whatever. You know? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Just keep it away from mine. <laughs> yeah, I would go with the beating, too. Um, though it did occur to me. Like, if you do the, the lashings, eventually your back will be, uh, it'll become really callous to do it. It'll have lots of scar, scar tissue and shit. But, of course, um, how how much often are you going to get whipped after that? You know what I'm saying? That's that's not a common problem on these city streets. Somebody walking up to a guy with a fucking whip and whipping him. They just usually use a gun or a knife. So, yeah, I could go with the beat. Wouldn't it be a bit funny if it was if people walked up were like, give me your wallet. <laughs> yeah. It would probably work, you know. Though may, yeah. maybe a riding crop would be better because you, you don't need to like, back up and use it. Yeah, true that. True yeah. that. <laughs> uh, last one is, um, would you rather be branded with a swastika on your face or be sunburned for an entire day. So it's like a heat wave, which you have going on there in California, right? Oh, yeah. It was uh, 112 today. Um, it was 107 when I was out doing my meet. Oh, yeah. Shameless plug. I'm in the process of putting together my first little episode of a little cooking. I'll do some cooking episodes video. I smoked some meat marinated the last couple of days and smoked it today on the smoker and been recording it and i'm going to put together a little video and i'll be uploading that on some things so oh wicked people can check me out i don't uh remember exactly what my youtube channel i think it's scoob dad Leahy, so it'll be on there um i might we might even upload it on your stuff too morgan if we want like i don't really know just get it out there or something you know we'll, we'll figure it out we'll do it later but anyway god these things are so good dude cheese pause man Anyway, what were we saying now? I totally forgot. <laughs> would, you, would you rather be branded with a swastika on your face oh, or be sunburned for an entire wave. day? Yeah, so, that's, that's where we were. Heat yeah, wave. so say you had to lay out today from dawn to dusk and just let the sun beat down on you. Where you, well, you get the swastika? No, no, no. <laughs> Can't do the swazi, bro, because that'd be permanent. <laughs> and I don't... I don't rep brands that I don't uh, agree with. You know what I'm saying? So I don't rep that brand. Um, so I'd have to go with the sunburn. Um, it'll suck balls. Um, hopefully my balls can be come out there. Am I naked? You didn't add, you didn't say that. So I'm wearing. Yeah, you should be naked. Yeah. <sighs> what you or, say? Or, or, or maybe some mouse. You know. Yeah. Either way. Um. I'll just let, I'll just drape a, a leaf over it or something, you know. We'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give Adam you, and Eve this bitch. I'll give you this much room. So you're you get to wear uh, one of those marble bag speedos, you know, <laughs> tough little suit. The one that's like a little little pouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just sit, sit your guy in. <laughs> yeah. Man, I had a pair of underwear like that once, dude. Um. They were uh, called the banana hammocks. Jason's wife called them my banana hammocks because <laughs> she could see them in my laundry. Because I was staying at their house and uh, she'd do my, <laughs> my laundry sometimes. Raymond, here's your banana hammock underwear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I modeled them for them once, you know. It's they hilarious see. how back in the 80s, a lot of guys had like sexy underwear uh, with like a, yeah. zebra, a zebra pattern, a leopard pattern. <laughs> Yeah, I still got those. You still still have them? Yeah, dude, I rock the I'll rock the leopard pattern. You know it. Yeah, <laughs> but for the most part, men's lingerie is not really taking off. Uh, I'm like a sex panther. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, did we? Did I ever answer the question yet? Uh, the last one. Oh yeah, you already answered it. The swastika. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because that, that, and that's permanent, dude. The suntan, the suntan thing's gonna go away eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we can't be stuck with that. Yeah, my uh, sunburns turned to tans. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, mine too. And that's another thing. Like, I burn really bad. Uh, I get bright red. It does not hurt, 
and by tomorrow it's tan. I'll turn bright red, pink, almost, and you'll be like, oh my, and I'll be like, nope, sunburns do they don't burn me, and uh, and then like I said, I'm instantly, I don't know what it is. There's something in my bloodline. I don't know what it is uh, that just takes that sun, no problem. Like it doesn't affect me. Like I don't wear lo- like lotion. I walk around. I don't. I wear nothing but these all the time. I only put shirts on occasionally when I have to go somewhere or. You know, when I record something, if you guys see me with a t-shirt on, I got it on, you know, because I put it on for you guys, you know. Uh, but other than that, this is all I wear all day, t- is these tank tops. And uh, never burns. Uh, hmm. All right, I got a few random thoughts. You want me to do a couple of those and bang them out real quick? All right, all right, all right. So we already heard the B one. Here's one that's just a quick little one that I thought of. Uh, um, eye drops are technically just blinker fluid. Yeah, pretty much. I don't think they actually do anything for your eyes. <laughs> you know? Well, because, like, your eyes are blinker. So it's like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're just blinker fluid. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, twins. Twins are, like, buy one, get one free for, for moms. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Triplets, too. Buy one, yeah. two free. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, okay. The only difference between being murdered uh, and assassinated is how important you are to the public. Exactly. Yep. Totally. <laughs> nobody, nobody calls Joe Blow. Nobody calls that murder. Uh, or assassination. Assassination. No. Yeah. No. It has no, to be no. like a politician or yep. celebrity governor. Or you know, government person, something. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, kid, young turtles must have a, a a a sad, boring life when it comes to friends. Um, because they can never invite any of their friends over for a sleepover because they sleep inside their own homes and they can't invite their people inside their little shell homes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so they can't ever have a friend over for a sleepover when they're growing up. <laughs> uh, okay. I was wondering what was the inspiration to the urinal? What drove someone to invent the urinal? So do you think the urinal was invented... When some when someone was sitting there and some watching and some really tall guy came walking by and went what the hell in front of the sink? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe just right? recognition of the fact that urination for men is such a simplistic and uh, you know you know you can just get it over with so fast you know it's so easy. So I got a fifteen drink piss I'm about to flush out of my fucking body. Whereas women they have to go into the stall. Uh, you know, pull down their pants and their underwear. And it's, it's a whole production, but we just we just we do it so easily and and quickly. Yeah, but, uh, you, yeah. all your journals sometimes all you need, right? So and and like I said, it's the guy whoever invented was sitting there and he watched this big tall guy just walk by and whip it out and piss in the sink. And so he was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna make a sink for the piss." <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Oh, excuse me. See, yeah. there we go. Use other people's bad behavior for your benefit. <laughs> uh, okay, have you ever thought of the fact that nightmares are just stories our brain makes up uh, and then gets scared of? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and bad dreams, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bad dreams, nightmares. They're just stories our brain makes up and then scares itself with. We get, you know, it gets scared of. <laughs> But like, uh, see, well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a difference between nightmares and bad dreams. Like last night I had a dream. I was with all these hot young girls and they started taking their clothes off and orgy was about to start. And then they, they just fucking disappeared <laughs> like out of thin air. Just boom, they were gone. And I was bummed out for the rest of the dream. <laughs> so oh, that sucks, dude. Yeah, man. Well, one of the girls was really hairy, so I wasn't. Excited about that, but there were other there were hot chicks there. If if you were to start dating a chick and she was totally cool and totally hot and she was awesome, but then you found out that she was hairy, uh, you know, like certain places, is it not necessarily just downstairs? I'm other place, armpit, whatever. Would well, it be inappropriate? Would it be inappropriate or wrong to say, "Hey, I'm not into that"? Can you shave your pits? Or do you think we'd be getting hit with sexist bullshit these days because the way the world is nowadays? I especially, think, especially being white men, we're you know yeah. we're wrong regardless. I think any woman who lets that grow in, probably, uh, yeah, probably is a feminist, or they 
probably um or maybe they just don't care about what people think of them but uh i'm i i've wanted to turn off myself big one big one and if oh. that makes me sound like a jerk let me say this women are very militant and inflexible about not dating men who are shorter than they are how do they know a shorter guy wouldn't wouldn't be a great guy or wouldn't make a good boyfriend or husband they don't know that they just make these assumptions based on service value you know service on the you know service related stimuli so um yeah so they you know they're su they're superficial about shit too we just of course consider of course. our pit hair to be unfeminine you know and 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 just so we know everybody out there i was totally being uh, facetious and sarcastic when i said we're always at fault because we've been that's just the way the world puts it i don't believe that i don't subscribe to that philosophy that's another brand i don't support <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know which i don't want to get into all the brands i don't support because this ain't a political show <laughs> one day i'll make one i want to make a talk show yeah yeah i really do I really see do. what you want exactly <laughs> yeah. uh let's see here i think i got one more uh one more quick little random thought that came to me where is it at here yeah here it is uh yeah that's it. um so how do i want to word this uh, people wonder how why i think when i because i don't really write notes as in sentences and explanations i write just keynote words and then i just formulate how i want to say it in a you know on the spot that's how i like to do things uh all right, so every language known to man, right? Every language known to man uh, originally started out as gibberish until that first person was able to convince enough people that what they said was a word. Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> right? The yeah, first was... human to speak whatever language, whatever the first word was, that was just gibberish to everybody else until they convinced enough people. Yeah, there are a lot of animals that use vocalizations to, to communicate with other animals and with humans like you know like lions roaring bears growling and it all they're doing it to express uh, feelings to get a point across and if you're if you're a member of the same species you know what it, it's all about but uh, I think that seems to be a seriously uh, utilitarian thing for humans and animals yeah my my cat Vince the pins he talks to me all the time Talks yep. to me all the time. It's and the like funny much. thing is, is, is when you live with an animal long enough, like you start to understand their language. That's right, yeah. It's good. It's pretty cool. It's a very intuitive relationship. Uh, oh, hey, real quick. I wanted to, uh, I meant to do this at the top of the show, but I'm doing it right now. I wanted to give a couple shout outs uh, to my homegirl, Athena. Much love, girl. Uh, to Amanda Sanchez from Guadalajara. And to um, uh, Amelia Gemini, you guys are my favorite commenters over the last couple of weeks. You guys have said some awesome things, and uh, you're, you're much love. And I just wanted to give you three a couple shout outs. Athena, I love you. And uh, yeah. Oh, I do have something. You know, it's not something that pissed me. Like I was, try I didn't think of any things that pissed me off this week. But then today, something happened, and I realized something else that pisses me off. Now, Caterpillars piss me off. Caterpillars. Caterpillars, dude. I got a tomato garden. I got some tomatoes and a jalapeno. And fucking, the, I go out there the other morning and there's a freaking caterpillar ate a part of my tomato that I've been waiting. It's just starting to turn ripe and I've been waiting on this one. And like, that pissed me off. So I get rid of them. I go back out there today and my bush looks fucking, my plant looks mostly stripped. And I go, look, and I don't know if it's the same damn caterpillar or another one, but there's another one on there. And he's like stripped the whole freaking thing almost. I come out here, check out my little tomatoes, right? And you know what I notice? We got a tomato bitten out of, you know why? I don't know if you can see it, but look. That's a caterpillar right there. Are you eating that tomato? <laughs> Little some bitch, huh? <laughs> All right, there y'all see him. And it's and it's like so. I realized today that um, caterpillars totally piss me off. 
I, 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 I took him this time all the way. You know, first one I went, you know, across the yard and put this guy. I, I took out front, went down the street, and I put him in a bush. And I told him, "Hey, fucker, listen here. Tell all your little caterpillar homeboys, next fucker I, I catch in my my garden, I'm gonna start killing you guys." <laughs> More you like you're falling asleep over there, buddy. No, no. But I had I had a, a pet peeve. Go ahead. Um, so I I just got my second dose of the vaccine. So I've got the vaccination on record. I I even downloaded uh, the the receipt to my phone so I can show it to people. But they're still making us wear the fucking masks. It just seems like, well, what's the point then? You know, I did this. I played my role, and now I still. Uh, yeah. No. Um, if you look in the fine print, it straight up says in there that the vaccine doesn't protect you from catching transmitting or receiving the virus um, straight up says it in there i've looked at all the, all, all of them um i would i wasn't planning on getting it anyway and i'm still not and i mean i i'm not, i'm i'm all for people making choices if someone wants something they can get it if they don't they don't have to i don't get the flu shot i haven't had the flu shot in deck like decades like you know what i'm saying i don't i don't get sick you know i've been sick like fucking i can count it in my hand in my life i mean that's illnesses like i've got plenty of self-induced like uh liquor (laughs) you know hangovers and shit or party too hard and shit like that like i've been sick but that's self-induced shit plenty of that but like actual cold like it never really happens i'm i'm healthy all the time and uh which which does kind of suck it does have its drawbacks people don't realize it like i like People know people know me know that I don't get sick so much. Like when I call somewhere and sick, they'd be like, "Bullshit, <laughs> come to school, come to work." No, you're not. We know you're not. <laughs> you're a bad liar, huh? No, I'm a great liar. They just know I don't get sick. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. And so they'd be like, "No, you're not sick. Come in. You haven't you haven't been sick like." Well, you're lucky. Yeah, it, it's a curse though. At the same time, you know. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, if you if you get sick periodically, you can call in and fake sick every once in a while and take a day off. If you're never sick and people know that you're always healthy, you can't fake sick. Like, they're like, people don't believe yeah. it. You know? Uh, but, you know, it's like what Ricky says. You can't judge a covering book by its look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that one. Uh... Uh, when I saw it the other day, so I had to say it. Uh, oh, My favorite shit, is still detarded. That's such a great word. <laughs> detarded. <laughs> that is good shit. Oh, my fucking pen said I need to plug her in. Well, shoot, bud. I think I'm about out of material. Yeah, me too. You look like you're getting ready to there fall yeah. asleep. Like I said, yeah. we, we, we run this episode really late, just so people know. It's so Morgan can hang out and party with us uh it's his night to cut loose and uh i love it buddy it's special right. it's now special for me to hang out with you and have a good old time man yeah likewise yeah uh and next week we got um you got the greasy getting greasy guys right greasy po- greasy guys podcast yeah getting greasy yeah, yeah. Uh, next See, week. that's what it is yeah next sunday the 18th we're recording yeah, look for, uh, it's gonna be interesting to have like a five member panel discussion that's gonna be awesome i can't yeah, wait sure and they're comedians so it'll be funny so that's right and so are we so that's are right we. <laughs> all right all right Again, we love you guys and that's the way she goes my man fuck off we got work to do 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 all right fuck it uh, good times again, Mark. Good times. Today on MTV News, major developments in the Canadian rap scene. How did a completely unknown MC go from playing video dances for $30 a night to five sold out shows at Massey Hall and a major label bidding war on his back catalog of 14 previously unreleased albums? With 16 years of determination and never giving up on his dream. No matter how tough it got, J Rock never dropped the mic. I met up with him in Toronto on the release of his new single, Can't Not Be Feeling This. So congratulations on all your success. This is very big news for you. It is big, dog. Hey, what's your name is again? Aaliyah Jasmine. Aaliyah Jasmine, you know what I'm saying? 
Thank you, Aaliyah Jasmine. You know, there's a lot of label buzz about you right now. That the industry's talking about you, um, but I understand it's also bittersweet for you. Hey, let me get some straight, duh. Straighter than them big long getaway sticks. You know what I'm saying? I want to be very clear about one thing, duh. My new record's called Get My DJ Out of Jail. And that ain't exploiting that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Because he is in jail right now, you know what I'm saying? That's just the reality of my truths. What exactly happened to your DJ? I don't want to give away the specifics, you know what I mean? Suffice to say, duh, he did some robberization and some B and E's. Yeah! He ain't gone away forever, dog. And he did it for a good reason, which I won't. I'm not at li legal liberty to say what exactly he was doing up in there. You know what I'm saying? But he gonna be out soon. And when he out, he gonna taste the champagnes with me. Blah, blah, yo, yeah, yo. Yeah. T, this is for you and me, dog. If you watch him from up in there, pound it. Say it.